up on you and it just sort of, it sort of gets you in a place where you don't smell anymore. You smell other things, but you don't smell the chemicals. You won't taste it in your water. It'll be in your water, but you won't taste it because it's gradual. It comes in gradually. So in this report, it talks about all this stuff. And then it talks about, so what do we do about Love Canal? So here you have these 20,000 tons of chemicals in the center of the neighborhood in an old canal. That's why it was called Love Canal. It was an actual dug canal, well, partially dug canal. And what, they had a number of suggestions. One suggestion, this is so government and industry. One suggestion was, we'll put window fans in the basement of people's homes and suck the air out. Well, there's a plan. In the dead of winter, what is that heating bill going to look like, right? Just suck my air out. Um, the other, they, they had a number of other ideas. And, but the final idea they had was to put a trench around it to capture anything that was moving out. Uh, and a clay cap over the top of it to keep water and snow melt from coming in and increasing the volume of liquid below it. And, and so that, I mean, that's the plan actually they ended up doing at Love Canal. So, so I'm looking at that and then I'm looking on the last page and this is the page that, should, that made me so crazy that all of my Irish, I'm 100% I'm Irish. You can tell, right? So my Irish got up as my family calls it. So I look at the last page and in the last page, it talks about what would it cost to do that, to put a cap on it and a trench around it. And the number was $20 million. And then they did what they're doing here and everywhere. Then they did a cost-benefit analysis. Meaning, if we were to spend $20 million to fix this problem, who would benefit? So they looked at my husband, and just to take a very big mathematical model and make it understandable, they looked at my family, and my husband made $10,000 a year, so he was worth $10,000 annually, until some point where they assumed he retired or died. Because I did not work outside the home, I was worth nothing. And my son, Michael, was likely to follow in his daddy's footsteps. So he was worth $10,000 a year plus an inflation factor when he became of age. And because my daughter is likely to follow in her mother's footsteps, she was worth zero. And there is no inflation factor for zero. It's zero is zero is zero. But essentially what they did is look at our neighborhood. We had 240 low income um, townhouses to one side of the Love Canal and then single family homes on the starter homes on the other side. So they looked at the, the 800 families and they said they are not worth, this is what they said, they used a calculation to say it, but this is what they said, we were not worth spending $20 million. Cost benefit analysis. When they put that well in, that aquifer that is protected for your drinking water, somebody somewhere did a cost-benefit analysis. They made that decision somewhere down. It may not be written. It may not even be open to the public. You could ask my ace researcher, Teresa, back there. But somebody made that decision. Somebody made that decision to put that well pad in that backyard by those mobile homes and sacrifice those families over other families. It wasn't about the shell formation. Please, it's so stupid. It's stupid, it's everywhere, right? So how come they get it in someone else? Like, where's the most expensive property around here? Is there any expensive property? <laughs> Okay, so how many injection wells are there? How many well pads for extraction are there? They have one? Earthquakes. They have earthquakes, but then what is that a result of? Right, right. So, so they are making decisions. Someone is making a decision about regardless of who gets fracked or injected, that that community isn't worth anything else. I mean, that's really the bottom line. 
That is, I mean, that you're just being, you, you called it the great experiment. I call it the great, um, I forgot. <laughs> It's not a great experiment. It's it's a it's a it's a great something else. Disaster. No, it's not. Disaster. I'll, I'll, it'll come to me. This is what happens when you get over sixty. They're sacrificing your community. They're sacrificing your state. They're sacrificing. No. So what do you do about that? I know that you guys have tried and worked really hard on ballot initiatives, um, and and so far that has not worked. I don't know if you're going to do it again. Um, but I know you guys have been working really hard, but that's not working. It doesn't mean you shouldn't do it again, by the way. It's just saying you shouldn't do that alone. That's not enough. It's not enough. So what are you going to do? So at Love Canal, what we did is we put together a strategic plan. Have you guys put together a strategic plan? We did at one point. One point. And what happened to the strategic plan? They still it what? They do it every day. Every day we do. No, a strategic plan is, and you may have put one together once, <clears throat> a strategic plan is really like, who can stop this? Who can stop this madness? And what would it take to stop it? And you guys keep saying no, no to injection wells, no to well pads, no to this, no to this. What are you saying yes to? You're saying yes to renewable with solar and wind, but are you saying it in a broad way or are you saying it with some kind of plan? So let me give you an example. I mean, we all say there's alternative energy and conservation. That's not saying yes to something. That's not saying yes to, I mean, it is saying yes to something, but really you're not working on it, so you're not. So if you were to have a town hall meeting like this, but bigger, the issue that I've heard since I've been here, and it's been a relatively short period of time, but the issue I've heard over and over again in this community is it's an issue of jobs. Right. That, that it's really, a, it's a depressed area, a lot of industries have closed, a lot of people are unemployed or otherwise employed and not doing, not doing work that's really bringing them enough to live comfortably. So, if the issue here to move the masses, you guys are all here because of injection wells or, or extraction wells or something like that. You're, you're all here because of, because of some issue as it relates to environment, chemicals, and health. Yes. There are people out there who don't give a hoot about any of those. Right? Those are the ones that don't come. You keep telling them to come and they keep saying, well, maybe, but they don't ever come. So what do those people care about? And let's just assume for a moment what they, no, they do care about something. Let's assume for a moment they care about jobs, just because it's an easy thing to do. So if they care about jobs, would they come to a meeting if it was talking about bringing more jobs to this area? How many people think it will? Have you had such a meeting? No. So, so, so let's talk about what, what could that look like? So this is what we did in a number of counties, uh, communities, I'm sorry, in North Carolina. We talked to people and brought them to a town hall meeting to talk about no more fracking. Well, they're not fracking, but theirs was mega dumps. No, no to this, no to this, and let's come up with an economic plan. And people came to the table, to the room, and we had a conversation about what is it that this community does not have. Now, in the case of North Carolina, in this sort of rural area, they didn't have a movie house. <laughs> they didn't have a movie house, it was just crazy. Okay, so we put that on the list. We talked about all the things that the community needed. Social services, movie houses, you know, it was a whole host of different list. And then, how could they move those things to here? What does the Chamber of Commerce website say about the area? Has anybody ever looked at that? Yeah. What does it say? Someone. The fracking is going to create jobs, and we have to be aggressively patient for these jobs. It says that on the Chamber of Commerce aggressive website? Yes. yes. They're all in. Yeah. Well, I understand they're all in, but usually on a Chamber of Commerce 